Hello, everybody, and welcome to Casual Shenanigans, episode 14. Please stand by while we invite absolutely everybody uh, back onto the call because we broke Google Plus. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to start inviting people. And uh, don't worry, I'll fill the dead air with my co host. uh... Why don't you? Why don't you vamp for a little bit? Oh no, dead air! What do I do? <laughs> yeah, so it looks like Google Plus updated like yesterday, of course, yesterday, and everything appears to be wonderfully broken. So that's very exciting. Thanks, Google. Yeah, we've tried to host this call several times, and it is not working. We have a good sized now, group tonight too. Yeah, now it is working. So, uh, yeah. Welcome everybody who's not currently watching live, but all of you listeners, welcome. Just so you know, this doesn't normally go this poorly. <laughs> Although speaking of the size of our group tonight, I notice how as soon as the topic is about looting, everyone just shows up. Like, what? <laughs> Loot? Is it, wor- is it working? <laughs> it is working. We are currently live. And I just tweeted the link out. All right. Awesome. So uh, I also invited Steve. Let me invite James. Once we're live, I don't know <laughs> if we can short, <laughs> kick us out. <laughs> okay, everyone, wait, wait, since we are live, people introduce yourselves. Uh, I am all, j- so, okay, I'm Germ Gaming, one of your hosts. Welcome to Casual Shenanigans 14, a podcast all about Battlefield <laughs> Daisy and all things PC game related. I'm one of your hosts, Germ Gaming. I'm joined by Dave. I can't go that fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey guys, I'll do it for you. Hey guys, it's Dave, the not so evil, evil Viking 13. Uh, we're also joined by Joel. Hey guys, and Joel's <laughs> wife, Joy. Hi, Joy. Wait, no, Jeremiah, you have to let Joel do his hey guys. He has to do his hey okay. guys. Okay, all right. Do Joel, your hey please. Guys. Hey guys. All there right. it is. Now it's official. <laughs> all right, and we are joined by friend of the podcast, James. We are joined by Steve. Steve, we're joined by Steve. Hey, Say yes, hi, Steve. Sorry, I just got in. Steve. <laughs> yeah, check your settings, Steve. Uh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, hopefully we'll be joined by Chris in just a minute. So while we're getting going here, um, Dave, there's been a tiny, tiny bit of uh, Daisy news, and you're probably the only person who thinks that's enough news to get excited over, and I'm sure you're <laughs> already excited. So why don't you tell us what's new in Daisy? Wow, I feel kind of on the spot here, but I wasn't actually that excited. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, then tell us why. Why aren't you excited? Um. Well, I mean, Rocket, well, Dean, is still away at Everest. He's actually making his summit hike uh, next week. They're leaving the last base camp today. So it's been pretty quiet on the home front. You know, he has a whole team working away, but they're they're kind of just buttoned down, focusing on working on the game and not posting updates. Seeing Rocket kind of always led that kind of thing. Um, they had some updates from, uh, from PAX, actually from March. They posted some videos from that, but we've seen most of those. And uh, that's some great interviews and all, but... Nothing really new. Um, uh huh. There was a kind of a cool uh, photo post. If you're into this kind of thing, um, I enjoy level design and, and all that kind of stuff. And the team actually went out to the area of the Czech Republic that Chinaris is actually modeled off of, and they have some uh, some side by side comparisons for some new areas in DayZ, showing the actual um, <clears throat> the actual real life apartment buildings compared to the ones. Uh, in Daisy, and that's pretty cool to see, uh, mm-hmm. especially seeing for their uh, their overall satellite imagery. They actually used real satellite pictures of this area, and then modeled the the, the ground stuff to be very very close to it. So it's kind of eerie, you know. They're driving around, and it's like, oh, by the way, guys, here's the road to Starry Sobor, and it's like a side by side comparison. And it's actually the road, like the hill is the same, the tree line is the same. It's kind of weird, actually. <laughs> So that's all the stuff that Bohemia puts time into, not making the game run well, but it's exactly correct. <laughs> Maybe that's why it doesn't run well. <laughs> um, and there's a current conspiracy theory, and this is just kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's like a Half-Life 3 style conspiracy theory. Like they're like, the amount of dissecting that goes on with everything that gets posted is hilarious. Uh, mm-hmm. They posted a brief interview with Ivan, who is the uh, map design consultant for DayZ. And he talks mm-hmm. a bit about the uh, the map design, and that's a pretty cool interview, pretty short. But at the very end, a, a bandit slash coworker comes up behind him and mugs him as he's saying the lines somewhere along the lines of, "Hopefully, you guys can join us in the new map next week." And then he gets like mugged. Oh, <laughs> so it, it could be next. He could be saying next week, or maybe he just m- misspoke and meant to say next month. But there's currently plenty of theories flying around that it's coming out next week. Rocket's going to release Daisy from the peak of Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
that would be epic. Like, I, I would probably freak out a little bit just because that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that does sound like it's pretty awesome. We, we crowned him like the king of game developers at that point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hail Lord Rocket! But yeah, that's the basic Daisy news. Um, not a whole lot going on. But just some cool stuff. If you guys just climbing Mount Everest, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nothing going on on the home front. Uh, I think Rocket has plenty <laughs> going on. <laughs> you know, at that highest point on Earth. Yes. Yes. Um. So we are still trying to get Chris into the podcast. Um. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time over here trying to manage that. You know, speaking um, of issues with getting Chris and Steve into the same same connection, uh, didn't we have some network problems with him? And Arma 2? Or was it Arma yes. 3? Uh, well, it's Arma 3 as well. Um, yeah, that's a nice Arma problem. Arma won't let two people on the same IP subnet, as far as I can tell. Uh, it won't let them both join a game. One of them can host a game, but I don't know. It's dumb. <laughs> I wonder if that's a similar issue that we're having right here. Hey, Joel, how did you, uh, how did you search for this and join it live? Chris doesn't know how to do that. Yeah, it's a little frustrating. Um, if you go to just the main Google Plus main page, mm -hmm. by the top of your by your name, I mean that there's a little like you know notification, and you can get to that by right there, or um, on the right side. I think I think the new layout's pretty bad because it's hard to tell what it is. Mm -hmm. But there should be a, there should be a little green icon with Jeremiah's name on it and a little question mark, but it should be green. And if you click on that, and then the bottom, you should be able to click on reply, and then you'll jump right in, I believe. As all the okay. viewers now join the call. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Just pile on in. There's room for everyone. <laughs> we couldn't do it with seven, but we did it with 46. <laughs> uh, so, Chris, he can see the Hangout. He just can't join it. Man, that's really weird. Everything's really weird. This is going heard, like, so smoothly tonight. I like, a 1970s modem tone over my head. Yeah, same what here. Was... 1970s modem? What modem were you using? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the movie War Games? Do you have to use the phone on the thing to dial in? <laughs> is that how you're connecting in, James? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Only the finest in modem technology. You know, like... In like a couple years, we're no one's gonna be able to actually play games with each other anymore. Like you're gonna have to live like you're gonna have to live in Tokyo, and one's gonna have to live in America so you can play together because the IP connections will be too close. It's like, sorry, you live in the same country. Is that how that works? We do not Joel? allow this. You Is that could your prediction, be sharing Joel? the game. Can we write this yes. down? That's my prediction. Sorry, you're gonna have to move to the next state to play a game with your friend because you might be sharing that game. Freaking DRM. All right. Well, I think we're just going to have to move on. And if Chris can join, Chris can join. But otherwise, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, Chris, because you're probably watching this right now. But oh, <laughs> like the, I don't the know what to do. Pain. He just pressed up against it. Like, Guys, are you in there? Let me in. Here, while we cover the next topic real quick, Steve, if there's anything you can do to help him or get him in the same room so he can hear, I guess do it. Otherwise, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> okay. But anyway, all right, so real quick, before we move on to our main topic this evening, the reason we've assembled all of you together, um, we have a tech question. You can send your tech questions into casualshenanigans at gmail.com. Um, and the question comes from uh, someone whose name I can't find, the Phil Phil. Uh, it comes from the Phil Phil, and I just got a little ding like someone's trying to join. I wonder if that's Chris. Yeah, I got Dang, that. Yeah. That was loud. You got yeah, he's saying, hey, guys. <laughs> oh, is he in chat? <laughs> yeah. I don't see I him in chat. He's in the, uh, the other chat from the other call. Oh, I don't understand any of this. Oh, wow, there's so, like anyway. three calls in the background of my Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on with this question. Um, so he has a Predator G five nine ten. I'm assuming that's some sort of pre built gaming desktop with an i seven twenty six hundred and a Radeon HD sixty eight seventy eight gigs of RAM seven hundred and fifty watt power supply. I'm assuming he means watt. Uh, and he's looking to upgrade his graphics card. Which one would you recommend within a reasonable price? So he's got a sixty eight seventy. Joel, what would you recommend? 
Joy, take it away. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I'm an expert on this. So I can tell you exactly which one you want. All right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do is you want to take the back of your TV, just uh, disassemble that back panel, and then you can take that LCD thing and then you shove it in the back of your PC and it gives you more pixels for your buck. Now, you may have to weld that, actually. <laughs> Maybe some <laughs> welding work. involved. But don't okay, let Dave. <laughs> we'll move on. Dave. Uh, it's Chris. Oh, wait. Here comes Chris. Everyone He's get alive. ready to say hi to Chris. Wait for it. Wait for it. Still waiting for it. <laughs> S- hey. Hi, Chris. Yay. <laughs> I can't see your webcam, but I'm glad your voice is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay everyone welcome chris to the podcast uh so chris we've already talked about the daisy news there really isn't any um <laughs> and we're answering a tech question from this guy who has a i7 2600 and a 68 radeon 6870 and he's asking for a graphics card upgrade for a reasonable price so what do you think huh well i don't have a good answer to that <laughs> okay um yeah, Joe, i haven't been in the market for a little while so did I tell you what I did on the um, on r slash build a PC for me? No. Uh oh. I got banned. Uh, oh really? Separ- <laughs> I, I built a separate account. I was just in a real trolling mood because everyone like if if you haven't been there, go to Reddit slash build a PC or build a PC for me, and it's people like coming up with builds for other people who don't know what they're doing. Like people say, "Hey, I've got a thousand bucks. What's the best build I can do?" The problem is there's this big hive mind where if you suggest like a one thousand dollar build that does not include an i five thirty five seventy k and a 7970 you are apparently a moron um you know there's no room for like uh you know just creative outside of the box like everyone wants the standard parts or they yell at you so i made a um i made a a, an account and i went on and someone was willing to spend twenty five hundred dollars so uh i told him to get a titan a (laughs) celeron dual core (laughs) um two gigs of memory and then four 80 gigabyte hard drives to run in a RAID zero for his boot drive. <laughs> wow. And then like a $300 case and a 1200 watt power supply. <laughs> Within two minutes, I had a message in my inbox saying, you've been banned from posting an r <laughs> slash PC for me. <laughs> so I, I still use my main account to help people, but I don't know. I just got irritated. Anyway, I, I do kind question. of appreciate that. that uh, thousand dollar graphics card paired with the top <laughs> cpu technology of 2004 <laughs> that's pretty great um no it was a dual core it wasn't 2004 it's like 2006 um yeah, yeah wow yeah it was <laughs> i i went on that reddit once i think it's completely useless it reminds me of like well, trying to ask help. people's asking people's opinions to buy a car because everyone is so freaking different. Well, it's no, like, the, the main... The, definitely buy this car. No, don't you dare buy that car. The main car. advantage is car. you get a comparison shop. Like four or five people will post a build and then you get to kind of... Not get, if you're new, though. If you're new, do not go there. Well, maybe. You'll well, get the, lost The key to the, the post, Joel, is when you post it, you've got to explain what you're going to use it for and you'll get better yeah. answers that way. Yeah, yeah. If you just and post a money amount, everyone's going to be arguing. But if you say, like, I want to do medium PC gaming on a you know 720p screen and Facebook, you'll get more advice. But, I mean... How do you know if you're going to get actually really good advice? You don't really know. I, I've seen good some guy who just me. loves giving advice. Well, but, I mean, if you're new, how are you going to know if you're getting good advice? That's that is a very valid point. And then also I, I, another thing people get really upset about is if you recommend DDR 1333 instead of DDR 1600, people take it as like a personal offense. <laughs> and I have never found a single benchmark that shows like any real difference between DDR 1333 and DDR 1600. I went from DDR2 800 megahertz to eight gigs of that to 16 gigs of ddr3 1600 megahertz and i had literally no performance difference in anything like the only difference was i had more memory isn't the main advantage that it gives you more room like overhead for overclocking supposedly but i mean how far do most people overclock their memory anyway you don't need to with most modern (laughs) chipsets that's the question like at which at which point do you actually run into that ceiling (laughs) yeah so anyway, back to this poor guy's question. Um, <laughs> if you have a 6870, I'd recommend a Radeon uh, 7950. I had a 6870. I went yeah. into a 7950. It was about a 30% performance increase, and then I overclocked it, which these cards overclock really easily. And that got me like another 25% <laughs> performance okay. increase, and I can actually still push my card a little farther. I just don't need to because at the resolution I'm playing at, at 1080p, like it doesn't matter if I make the memory any faster. It can't, like this resolution can't use it. 
with the current games we have. So um, for the sub three hundred dollar price point, I would have to agree with you. I think that that's yeah. really. I mean, as far as a card that's up at the top of the charts right now, that's really the one to go for. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I'm extremely happy with mine, especially if you get it with the AMD uh, Never Settle Reloaded bundle that gives you like four or five free games. Uh, that's not too bad. So uh, yeah, I would I would recommend that. That's a good thing. I mean, your processor is good enough. You're not going to have to worry about upgrading that for years. Um, so anyway, yep. So yeah, that is all our tech questions for uh, this podcast. Thank you everybody for coming, and we'll see you all later. Um, no, <laughs> we actually have a, a, a topic to talk about tonight, which actually Joel suggested. So I'm going to let Joel take it away with absolutely no warning or preparation. Joel, go. okay um so tonight and this is why i have my wife on the podcast no you have her on because you love her and you love spending time with her i'm (laughs) you You talk like you know her (laughs) or i know all wives (laughs) i'm married too (laughs) she's wearing headphones so i can say this she can't hear me <laughs> that was really creepy. <laughs> it's not creepy. All right. So, Joel, anyway, I'm done interrupting. Anyways, you. so my wife is awesome because she does like to play games, which is amazing. Um, as opposed to James's wife, she does not like playing games. Oh. <laughs> Where's the uh, little graphic filter here? <laughs> the little blurry thing. <laughs> No, um, the games that Joy really likes to play are games that don't really involve platforming. <laughs> Any kind of, like, tactical jumping, <laughs> tactical, tactical jumping shooting. Is <laughs> jumping is very bad. <laughs> so I, we, she loves the Lego games. She likes Lego games. Any kind of game that involves collecting, looting, mm-hmm. that's simple. Like, the quests are generally easy. So she's played through both Lego Star Wars, both, I think, Lego Indiana Jones, Lego both, uh, the Harry Potter ones. The Lord of the Rings, Pirates of the Caribbean. There's a lot of Lego games. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and she 100%s them. Whoa, every like single every, one? Every single one. Uh, I think she's done three now or something like that. Or v- very close. Um, and so my question was, my this kind of podcast is basically about looting. And, and anyway, hey, so I recommend Daisy, no jumping <laughs> and looting. <laughs> it's got there's its own tactical set of, shooting it's, in that. And, and it's got the whole fun, like, 45 minutes of, wait, no, out of date. Okay, this server's down. Okay, I'm in, but I'm stuck on a black screen. Okay, I'm in. Where are you? Okay, you don't know either. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna run for the water. I'll see you in three hours. <laughs> Isn't this fun? See you guys. Well, going I bet to bed the Lego later. games are like you turn them on. It's instantly like bright lights and colors and music. Fun. <laughs> exactly. So the first question is: Are you a completionist, and why are you a completionist? So I say we just start. And we lost. So we know it, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did that happen to everyone else too? Yeah. Yes. 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 Like, yes. yes. <laughs> can you hear me on the so the first open. question is do we wait for him to come back or we just move probably on probably waxing poetic right now <laughs> i'm gonna ask i'll ask the question and we'll just start answering it. we'll just go down the line okay sorry chris you're always i don't know why you always end up on that side because my name starts oh, with a c oh yeah that actually makes sense um <laughs> <laughs> so anyway question number one was uh are you a completionist and why I would say that, yes, I am a completionist. Oh. It does have We're its back. bounds. Hey, Joel, we moved on without you. Um, <laughs> that's good, that's good. I just I, I, I just asked Chris the first question, so... Cool, we saw the lights flickering in our house a little bit ago, so we might die. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. I'm not too far away from you guys. <laughs> yeah, but you're busy right now, Dave. Um, <laughs> so I can't die? <laughs> you can't, no, you can't help Joel. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, no worries. I'm a completionist, not in, like, I'm going to go around and get all the collectibles, but I do want to see, like, every story path, usually, and, you know, kind of every main avenue, every area of the game. So often I'll save at crucial points and replay things so that I can experience both sides. Mm-hmm. Now, do you play, do you even do the quests that you really don't want to do, but you do it because you want to just complete it? Yes. Depends on the game, but often. Like Skyrim, yes. So, what makes you that person? Why, why do you 
do those extra quests that are not really fun and they're almost boring, but you do it just so you can say, I did it. I would say it's curiosity and perfectionism. <laughs> <laughs> I lived with him for three years. It's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, how about you? You know, I used to be a horrible completionist back when, you know, when I was a kid and I bought like two games at yard sales a year. I would just play them over and over again and find everything. But uh, Steam has kind of ruined me, actually. I'm still yep. a completionist for some of my favorite games, like um, any of the Stalker series or uh, even some of the Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. Like where I've been waiting for it for maybe a year or two when it comes out. I've got to find... If not everything, almost everything. I gotta see everything that there is to see. I gotta try it all. <laughs> now, the exception for me has become Steam sale games. Like, if I pay five, ten bucks for a game, I'm like eight hours in, and I I get easily distracted by the next shiny sale. I'm okay with not completing those. <laughs> yeah, tell us how what games you told me like a month ago or two months ago. What games are you technically playing right now? Especially like, by that logic, right, right now, <laughs> currently playing um, Borderlands Two. I've been playing Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two for about three years now. <laughs> uh, Skyrim. Um, I beat Far Cry Three actually. Playing Max Payne Three. Uh, Did you beat Max Payne yet? No, I'm about three hours in. I, I beat it last weekend. Play much. It was... Yeah, you're not gonna finish it. Uh, it's only actually, like that's... seven hours long. Oh, well, I'm pretty good to go then. Yeah, that's actually about it for right now. I've beaten a couple recently. That I've kind of oh, Ricky, off last list. time I talked to you, you still had like uh, Sleeping Dogs on the list. And... Oh, yep, there, there's Sleeping Dogs right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, still on there. Cool. <laughs> I, I actually uninstalled all 30 gigs of Rage just because um, I, I wanted to... I wanted to play it occasionally, but I couldn't I couldn't excuse the 30 gigs it was taking up for an occasional game. Yeah, that's a lot. Game. <laughs> That's me with Daisy. I like uninstall it. Like, you uninstalled it like week. five times. We're like, hey, Joe, why don't you play with us? We're like, uh, I got rid of it because I have no room in my hard drive. I know, because I just don't want to play it until the new game comes out. But then every couple months, you come crawling back. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a nice guy and I'll play with you guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> delete some of those you Lego save files. make your guys' series fun. Okay, jo uh, James, how about you? I am not a completionist, but I will try to do every quest in certain games. So like, you're making the difference... Out. Sorry, you're making. I'm the not difference. a completionist. I don't like. The, I don't go for trophies or okay. achievements or anything like that. And I don't have to get every single piece of loot item like I can or whatever. But you try. <laughs> but <I> try. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of inventory management, I must say. But so you try to get all the like the main quests and everything. But no, you I, don't, do I do all the quests. All stuff. the quests. All the quests. Okay, so all quests, but not like all the stupid like find two hundred red leaves. I'll do, a, I'll do a couple of those, and then I'm just like, you know, those aren't gonna get many extra loot for doing that um but like king uh, kingdoms of amalar <laughs> there it Joel's is playing through that now there it is <laughs> um i put up probably 97 hours into that just <laughs> walking around and doing quests and stuff. <laughs> actually james you mentioned achievements uh that's actually a pet peeve of mine like in most cases i really just like achievements i i want to see all the stuff that's actually content in the game but I don't want these like kind of breaking the fourth wall achievements that pop up. I just I don't like those at all. Yeah, most of my achievements, I'm like, oh, I got an achievement. Okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I don't actually work towards them at all. It's just like, oh, yep, there's one. Go away. <laughs> Broke my concentration. <laughs> I'm busy looting. Go away, achievements. <laughs> Can I spin you in a store? No. <laughs> um, I would say that I used to be a completionist, but like Dave, that was back when... I got like one game every couple years. Like Lego <laughs> Island, I did every single thing there was to do in Lego Island. Uh, in mm -hmm. Age of Empires, I did every single thing there was to oh, do yes. in Age of Empires. I'm trying to think, what are some of the other games I had? Frogger 2? Mm. Did everything there was in Frogger 2. Um, <laughs> what was there to do in Frogger 2? I went up the street. They were, there the were street. time trials. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and I did everything. The, like, the last game I did everything in was SSX3 for the GameCube. Um, wow. Steve, are your birds making noise again? No, that one's not me this time. Oh, okay, someone else has. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds that we have multiple people with birds? I like, closed my birds. window. It's kind of pleasant, actually. Can everyone else hear birds, or am I going crazy? I hear birds. I, I hear okay. birds too. Okay, so everyone hears birds, but no one knows where the birds are coming from. 
That is correct. <laughs> maybe it's not. Maybe it's not birds and just echo or something. It sounds maybe. like no, birds. It's definitely birds. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely birds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just. I'll see whose mic it comes through. I'm gonna make a note. Uh, at 33 <laughs> minutes, someone's mic has birds. And I'm gonna call you. And we're gonna talk about it. Oh, it was uh, Chris. He's got his window open. Oh, Chris. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't so see what? my mic turn on, but okay. <laughs> I was a I was a completionist back when I didn't have that many games, and I think games have gotten a lot worse with the random stuff for you to do. Like in SSX, you know, you could unlock all the outfits, all the people, and all the like, and you had to get all the big X's on the mountain. But like that was it. Like you know, maybe fifty, sixty hours, you did everything. And now it seems like games just have a ridiculous amount of things. Like Far Cry Three, you have to find all the jewels on the island, which the mini map tells you where they are. So really, it's just going around and collecting them all, which is like the dumbest grind quest ever. But yeah, anyway, so I don't really, same reason as Dave, we get too many games through Steam sales now. So here's so the I'll, question though. When you, when you okay. are staring one in the face, do you pick it up or do you walk on? I when pick it's it up, a game you've decided you don't care. <laughs> sometimes I pick it up. I pick it up if it's convenient or if it gives me money. If it gives me money, I'll pick it up, but I won't go out of my way to pick it up. Uh, Cause most games, you know, like. You start picking up this loot and you're like, I have to hold on to this money. Got to save my money. Got to blah, blah, blah. And then midway through the game, you're just rolling in money. And you have, because you found like the gun you want or whatever. And you don't care anymore. And I don't, maybe that's just me. But pretty much every game that has money in it, I finish the game with like thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yep. I'm a Grand Theft Auto 4, I, I played almost all the way through with just the Glock you get near the beginning. Uh, <laughs> like I had hu- I think hundreds of thousands of dollars by the end. Actually, yeah, that's probably the last game I played on pretty much everything in was Grand Theft Auto 4, but yeah. Don't have as much time to do it either. So, uh, Joy, how about you? Bef- yeah. Hold on, before we move on, oh, I have this problem sorry. when we're playing something like uh, Skyrim or something, like Fallout New Vegas, and I get impatient collecting stuff, so I'll find <laughs> a way to cheat. <laughs> Which, when I played New Vegas on the PS3... You could basically, or no, I played on the Xbox, and you could roll back the update, and you go to this casino and keep exchanging money and just keep tripling, doubling, you know, your money. And I had like two million dollars that I couldn't spend, but I still collected everything. But it, it let me buy everything I wanted, so it was a new way to to collect. I did that in Gran Turismo Four on the PS2. There's this one rally race where you could do it. You could do this tournament as many times as you wanted, and they'd keep giving you this prize car every time. So it was two races. I could do it in about 20 minutes and it would give me a $300,000 car, which I could just sell. So I would like, I would spend maybe an hour or two a day for over a month, just doing that tournament <laughs> over and over and over. So then if you've ever played Gran Turismo, you know that every time you enter a new car class, you have to get a new car and it gets pretty expensive. So I would, I had not, I had enough money. I could get a new car and then buy all the engine mods, which it turns out as a terrible way to play Gran Turismo because it's realistic. I'd have like some 1970s Alfa Romeo with 700 horsepower and it can't turn <laughs> or stop. It's uh, so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out that didn't really work, but you know, yeah. Speaking of abusing the, uh, the Bethesda games, the only cheat <laughs> that I use in Skyrim, the only one that I didn't play legit was, I used a console <laughs> command to increase my carry weight, and from there it just kind of, oh, kind of like steamrolled oh, out of control. I need to learn this. <laughs> no, don't break the game. <laughs> I remember once when Chris used console commands in Skyrim. Oh, that was great. <laughs> I'd beaten it though. <laughs> my my current carry weight in Skyrim is I think sixteen hundred, and I, got, I need to, I need to increase it again actually because I'm, I'm full. <laughs> I have a complete set of armor for like different areas of the map, like like warmer clothes. Why don't for the you just take stuff? And... Why don't you just like put stuff in a house and then come back to it? I get way too into it. Like I feel like I need to dress for the occasion and like be like using, like the <laughs> legit armors for dragon fights and yeah. Oh, hold on! Where I'm, like, I'm being attacked. Let me change. Dragon approach. <laughs> <laughs> I need my dragon armor. Like, where did I put it in my giant sack here? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, just a minute, guys. I gotta dig out my armor. It'll be a few minutes. Oh my gosh! For oh, a while, sorry, I, I used Lydia away. as like a pack mule. I used a console command on her, and she carried all my crap. And it was taking too long to get it out of her inventory. <laughs> <laughs> What are you holding up for us? New You're holding up your new Coca Cola. Thank oh, you, James. Yes, I have to show my loot off. <laughs> ah, okay. 
<laughs> All right, Joy. <laughs> let's desperately try to keep this moving along. Joy, uh, are you a completionist? I would say I am when it comes to easy games, <laughs> like the Lego games or like Fable 3, those types of games. Mm -hmm. I really like because I actually can finish them. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty proud that I actually <laughs> finished a game and I do like the achievements. I, I am one of those people. I do like them. But is that playing on the but PC or like on an Xbox? On the Xbox. Okay, so you've got your gamer score to worry about, which I hear <laughs> is a real big thing for console gamers. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but I do actually, I do like seeing the little like icon that pops up like, oh, you got 100% on Lego Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> like I totally, yes. <laughs> I'm that person. But if it's like a harder game, then I don't even bother because I know I can't get them. Mm -hmm. Especially like Joel said, I can't jump in games <laughs> like, to save my life. There's a like, great treasure called, like, just above my head. <laughs> Or yeah, like you have to like get like a billion kills in a certain situation or whatever. I know I can't do it, so I just don't even try. <laughs> Did you it's do hilarious. any of the cheats in Fable? I didn't know any of the cheats. And oh I was so gosh. mad. Why would you need to cheat in Fable? Fable is so easy. Because I was so mad because I was like almost <laughs> at the end and I was trying to get all the achievements and then our Xbox crashed and I lost the whole save. Hmm. So I need to start that one over on and Fable, get all the achievements. On Fable 3, if you, if you uh, start the second character, you got, you could exchange gifts back and forth and then they would drop out <laughs> and then it would just like keep multiplying. It would double. So you would just keep giving money to yourself over and over and over again until you just had like unlimited money. That's like the arrow glitch in um, what was it Oblivion, where like yeah, if you selected yeah. something in your inventory and then you selected an arrow, and then like really quick switched out of your inventory and shot the arrow, it would shoot like all the first item you selected all over the ground or something. something I can't remember, but it, it was something like or you dropped you dropped arrows. I used, I used to go into I used to go into small little markets like like this small little houses where the guys like selling armor and stuff. He's like, hey, yo, and I shot an arrow that shoots out a bazillion of watermelons. It was so many, it crushed the guy to death. <laughs> <laughs> and I stole whatever I wanted and I ran out. It was so funny because the guards, you know, they come in, they're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, like they're going to arrest you. But they like come in, they're like trying to walk through all the watermelons. <laughs> but you see the guy, they're like, they're like filling up like this and he just does, and he just like dies underneath them. <laughs> and then Dave runs up and starts collecting them all. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these watermelons. What if we need them later? <laughs> Don't you judge me. Joy and, Joy and I, we play Borderlands on PS3, and that's a lot of fun. But it's hilarious because I do all the shooting, and Joy does all the collecting. <laughs> just like right behind me. I'm like, there we go. It's it's awesome when, when we kill like the big bosses, like the loot just sprays out like blood. I just like sit. I don't even pick up anything. I just watch and see Joy just like running along the trail, just collecting everything. <laughs> She's like one of the nurses in old battlefields. Like after the battle, she runs out and starts stripping the dead down, saving up all their stuff. Yep, that's me. This gun's still good. <laughs> so, uh, Joel, are you a completionist? What? Oh, are you um, a completionist? <laughs> my completionist? Um, no, not really. I I love doing as many quests as I can. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd say Fallout Three is probably the biggest game I really would complete all the quests, except for Amalar right now. Kingdom of Amalar, I'm doing freaking everything. <laughs> I'm even doing the fetch quests, just the ones that you just like collect like fifty dandelions. <laughs> I don't I even understand because because like the, the story in the game, I have no idea what's going on. There's like elves and crap and stuff, but I, it's just like give me a quest, I'll go run and do it. But the, the best that game is you walk into a town and there's just. You're like, I'm on the middle of this quest, and all of a sudden you see these little exclamation points. There's five more quests here. <laughs> there's, there's five more quests there, and they just keep multiplying and multiplying. I was laughing. There was one guy who was, like, fumbling through a city, like, bleeding to death. Just blood spraying out of his out of his arm. It's hilarious. He's like, help me. But then he stops the chat for, like, 20 minutes, and he's like, go into this cave. I'm like, dude, you probably should. Hey, I think Jeremiah just disappeared. Keep going. Yeah, he froze up a while back. We're all off air. There's the story of the bloody guy. I want to hear how this ends. <laughs> we'll just we'll keep continuing. Anyways, so the guy's like talking for 20 minutes and the blood's just spraying out during the thing. You know? he stands, it's funny because like he has an animation of like hobbling, but as soon as you talk with him, he just stands up straight like totally fine. Yeah. 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 Joel, obviously your character is so inspiring that he just, he overcame that pain to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I go through the quest, I come back with some magical ring that's supposed to help him. I give it to him, or I think I give it to him, I don't know. But at the end, I, I mean, I finish the quest, he's like, thank you, chap, and he 
he starts walking away and he's still bleeding. Like nothing happened. I'm like, and then he came back to the same town and he's still bleeding. So I think that's either a glitch or, but oh well, he gave me gold. I'm feeling better. <laughs> Just a scratch. No, but I, I like in Skyrim and stuff. I don't even check treasure chests anymore. I don't even care. I just run right past them because I don't really care for the gold because there's not much you can use with gold in Skyrim anymore. At least that I found. I don't really upgrade weapons. I don't uh. upgrade the game correctly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if it's a game I really like, I'll try to do as much as I can. But uh, even in Bioshock Infinite, I hated all the looting in the game. That was my least favorite part, just because I thought it detracted from the game from all the beauty of the game where you're just constantly looking down the ground and collecting trash and hot dogs and stuff. We see beauty in different ways, Joel. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. I know I found beauty at the One bottom of... One man's trash <laughs> is my loot. I knew that I found beauty at the bottom of every single container that I found in that game. <laughs> it's empty, it's beautiful. <laughs> I played Borderlands with Dave and I would have to like force him to move to the next area because he just kept on sweeping it like a SWAT team or something. Like, <laughs> Every little tiny bit of loot. I believe you would actually. Dave is the worst. You, you okay? would actually force teleport me, Joel. Like I'd still be looting. You'd be like, "Screw you!" And, like enter a door and like drag me along with you. <laughs> this is this is what Dave is like. Uh... This is what Dave is like. We were playing Daisy, and we were playing on the server that we filmed Breaking Bad on. And on that server, there is a military encampment just north of Cherno. Literally a five minute run north of Cherno. And if you're in a vehicle. It's like a one minute drive north of Cherno. And this camp is full of AK 47s in various different, you know, configurations, some with uh, big scopes on them, some stock, some with grenade launchers. Like, pretty much all the weapons you want are two or three minutes away. And Dave would still want to cruise all around the map, checking every single second down. Like, I'd be like, hey, all right, let's go kill people. This is pretty much our conversation every night. Hey, I really just want to go, like, kill people. And Dave was like, okay, I was thinking we could hit up these tree stands, and then we can go to the Bologna, and then we can go to the Polana grocery store because we need food. Uh, and then maybe we can swing back down the coast road and we're like, hey, why don't we go find people and shoot them? And Dave is like, ah, uh, maybe, but see, I was thinking, um, there's this loot. What if we just stop to loot, like, just, just like on the way, just real quick, just real quick. <laughs> and I'm like, we have unlimited guns. They're right over there. We can just go get them. We don't need more guns. Real life, Dave. I want you to be like, Joe, 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 stop, stop. I saw a trash can. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> It's like shopping with my in-laws when we go, like, like they come in from out of town and they want to go down to, like, the ocean front and they have to look at every little stupid shop on the way. And it's like, the cool beach is over there. Like, look at this little <laughs> jug. But tourist traps. Steve, what about you? <laughs> yeah, you know, if it's a game I'm really into, I do tend to be. I, I'm finding with uh, Skyrim... Um, I, Dave has become my role model, pretty much. <laughs> oh no, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> he got another I, one. I started playing, and I realized, Enabler. you know, <laughs> I, I was stripping bodies of everything every time I came across people, and I killed them, and, and I made a rule not to steal anything, and then at one point I couldn't run, and I realized it was because I was carrying too much, so I got a companion and gave it all to him, <laughs> and tonight I was playing and realized I was carrying too much again and spent 10 minutes trying to figure out what I could possibly part with from my pack. You guys know that nothing. there are houses that you can put <laughs> things in, right? But then it's, you loot so you far away from that. you then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't so need a house in the stuff. game. You can just put it on the ground and it'll be there for... <laughs> but I mean, I check <laughs> everything. Clear every room, every body, and it's it's painful to have to leave loot behind. But And, and I'm barely into the game because I've spent so much time playing side quests and I haven't yeah, yeah. the main quest Are you quest one of the yet, looters so... who will like, pick up little pewter bowls because they're worth one gold? Yes, yeah. Well, tonight, tonight I actually finally stooped to stealing because I saw Malachite and it looked pretty, and so I stole it because no one was looking. So. <laughs> it was pretty. And I had to drop things to do that. You're a litterer. <laughs> do you guys litter in the game? I litter like so much. <laughs> I'm like in, I go to, oh, uh, is it Riften? And I just drop everything. And I'm like, it's like in the, and it stays there. It's so funny. I think that's why like the Xbox is like loading slower now. Yeah, I would think so. There's just like armor everywhere. People just like walking. Through. <laughs> Could you imagine walking through downtown and like, hey, someone left an AK-47 sitting on the ground? <laughs> I will live in that world. <laughs> uh, it's called Africa. Move there. Uh, <laughs> or Detroit. Or Chicago. <laughs> I got some more questions if we want to move on. Actually, sure, I, I sure, wanted to sure. make a note. Uh, Steve, you mentioned about how much time you were spending like trying to sort through your pack there in Skyrim. Uh-huh. 
that's actually when I finally broke and started using the console command just to increase my carry weight <laughs> because I'm like, mm -hmm. for, for every hour of gameplay that I'm like actually doing quests, I'm spending about 20 minutes going back to a house, <laughs> even fast traveling, and then sorting through loot. I'm like, I'm tired of sorting. I'm just going to freaking carry it all. <laughs> That's the mature this. decision. But then how do you find what you need when you want it? <laughs> you just carry a couple good weapons and you get over it. Uh, right. Okay, actually, th this this is actually I have a solution for that too, and this is this is getting pretty extreme now. <laughs> I found a really awesome UI mod. You know how Sky UI? Quick, uh, it, actually, Sky UI, and then a separate one for the quick launch menu. You guys know that that little quick launch menu for quickly selecting <laughs> weapons. Yeah, it's you don't want to look full at full height of the screen. Don't look at my quick launch menu. I found a mod that increases it to be the full size of your resolution. <laughs> so I have sets of armor and weapons on my no longer quick launch menu that is picked out of my fourteen hundred weight inventory. The quick launch phone book. <laughs> <laughs> I use my massive medium launch menu now to dig through my massive inventory. <laughs> it's a little bit faster, I guess. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm a special snowflake. Keep Next us moving, digital Joel. Orders. <laughs> Joel, we need to film an episode of that at my house one day. Oh, oh, we do. We do really, really need to do that. We need to have, like, have like the closet set up with the confession camera. <laughs> like, talk to the camera guy in the dark. Are you, like, wading through the piles? <laughs> oh, before we end this podcast, I have to confess my loot room, too, but I'll save that for later. All right. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> okay, second question is, what is your biggest motivation for finishing a game that motivates you to actually finish? All right, Chris. Um, this is something I was thinking about recently. Um, I'd I'd say for me, so much of it is kind of a loot-based mentality. It's either loot or the curiosity of a story. In games that the story isn't as strong, it's kind of becoming, hoping that I will become powerful or hoping that I will find that one gun that's just going to make this so much fun, that kind of thing. That's where really... Trying to find that one of... gun that will fill that hole yes, in yes. your heart that can only be f <laughs> can only be filled by, like, productive activities. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what about you? What drives me to actually complete a game? Yeah, although your Steam history may not... <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know if you have the credentials to answer this question, but... <laughs> I, I do still complete games, but like I said, okay. it's it's only the ones that I'm really excited to play. And mm -hmm. uh, occasionally I find a game, like I bought uh, Hitman Absolution, which just fit my play style so well. There wasn't a whole lot of looting, but there was a lot of sneaking and being awesome. <laughs> so I actually, I beat Hitman. Um, but I think what drives me to be a completionist, not just to complete the game... But to complete basically everything in the game is working on games myself. I kind of know like the amount of work that goes into detailing some of that stuff, and I actually feel a little bit guilty for not playing it all. Like, oh, I know you worked hard on this, but screw you, I'm too busy. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like um... I know I gave you sixty bucks. But <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna feel guilty anyway. So guilty. <laughs> Yeah, you've, you've already given them your money. Why, why yeah, do you I, care? I have gamers guild. I, but mm. also the fact that a lot of times when I'm playing these games, I do some of these side quests. Uh, a good example is the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion, which was supposed to just be a side quest, and that was better than the main story. A lot of times I find stuff off to the side that I enjoy more than, the, than like the core game itself. So mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen, but it happens enough where I'm like, I gotta go back just to make sure. <laughs> there might be cool stuff just around the corner. Mm -hmm. That's me, though. James, how about you? Well, I have um, three reasons for completing a game. Number one, um, I want to trade it in before the value goes down. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> I've rented it and I want to finish it before it goes back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I, th I think mostly like I just have this, and I think a lot of people have this internal desire to explore and have a, you know adventurous side that they can't necessarily just walk out of their neighborhood and start exploring through you know you know their neighbor's backyard but you can do it in a game so being able to explore every area not having those limitations i think kind of derives you know that that, that just having that adventure side i really want to see what's over that horizon mm -hmm. you know like dave said what's just what's around that corner what's if i look in this box will i find something cooler or will i find another tin can so. <laughs> 
That was really think, inspirational. <laughs> yeah, that, that was going to make my answer seem a lot dumber. Um, for me, I, the thing that will get me to complete a game is the story. I care a lot more about the story now than I used to. Um, because like, if the game mechanics are so awesome that I don't care about the story, I may not ever finish the game because I'll just get lost in doing whatever. Like Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Store, not Li Liberty Tales from Liberty City, whatever it's called. Um, you know, the standalone expansion. Um, I have still never beaten it because I got caught up in doing all the turf wars and like everything like that. And I'm just having so much fun doing that that I haven't even bothered to go back and finish the story. Um, but then there are other games like Tomb Raider. I really like the story and Far Cry 3. I really like the story. So I played all the way through those, but I wasn't really that motivated to go back and do all the side stuff because I didn't think the gameplay was that amazing. Except Far Cry 3 gameplay is pretty good. I'm actually going back and retaking all the outposts again for fun. But for me, it's really, it's all story. Um, yeah, I think for me is, is story. Or just skip joy. Fine. No, no big deal. I mean, well, I'm like, that's fine right here. And then she, no, rip. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, joy. Okay. Um, for me, I think it's a mixture of really like enjoying a game so much that I want to get the most out of it because there's not always easy games out there that I can do well and so there's that and then I'm a perfectionist so I just like seeing things finished and like it, it hurts you somewhere deep down inside it hurts you if something's unfinished <laughs> yeah especially if it's an easier game that I know I can finish and it's like oh, is that that one little thing I have to find like I have to go find it mm -hmm. have you ever played the uh 2008 Prince of Persia I have not you might want to look into it. They actually, a lot of fans of the franchise got mad at them because they took the gameplay, which used to be really hardcore and fast paced and you died a lot. And they actually made it so you literally can't die in the game, but it still has all the awesome platforming and collecting. And there's like a bunch of different zones you can travel to and stuff. So it's still got a lot of fun gameplay, but there's like the platforming is no, actually easy. The platform is, to, but there's no risk because you can experiment as much as you want if you fall off spoiler alert someone like a magical hand lifts you back up onto the platform like it's really it made a lot of fans upset but it made people who enjoy just casually hopping around and having fun they really liked it so i don't know might be worth looking into um yeah uh, what i was gonna say is I, the story has to be really really good and the gameplay um like almost either one if it, the story is really good i'll i'll finish it if it just really grabs me if the story's not very good, but the gameplay is really awesome, I'd still probably play it. I think that's I think that goes for like Far Cry three. Like I thought the story was eh, pretty weak. Um, the start was pretty decent. Um, the end was pretty bad, but the gameplay was a lot of fun, so I did finish it. I didn't go back and do all the rest of the stuff just because uh, I just rather move on to another game because I already put in like thirty hours I think to play the game. Right. But a game right. I'm just quitting right now, and it then I usually kind of question myself like, should I keep playing this just? Why am I playing this? Is Dishonored. I, it's funny. I really enjoyed really? the game. Really? I enjoyed the game. I'm literally at the last... I think I'm at the last, like, two hours of the game, maybe. I'm climbing up some castle or something. Yeah, you're you're within the last couple hours. But even just without playing the game, the gameplay is just not really wowed me that much. Like, the story is mm -hmm. not that amazing. They're both just kind of decent. It's an easy game, but... I don't know. After playing, like, Far Cry 3 and Assassin's Creed and stuff, it's just... I don't know. It's, hasn't so I'm like I'm at the end I'm like oh I should just finish it but I'm like why I'm like it's not really that fun I'd rather just play Kingdoms of Amalur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't that blown away by uh, I wasn't that blown away by Dishonored. Like it was all good, but I agree with you. Like it wasn't. I beat it because it wasn't that long, and I was enjoying the story decently. But I like I liked the world and everything. It felt like they had a lot going for them. They just didn't maybe flesh it out as much as they could have. I felt kind of lied about that game actually, because it looked like you were going to have like this huge city to explore and these giant like tripod things walking around. But it was really like super linear. Like it was. Like yeah, I mean it was. Just... It was like Half Life Two, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. But it was like, I don't know. It just it felt bad because it was like, okay, do I either just sneak or do I run in? I'm like. Well, sneaking takes like five extra hours to do it. Yeah. Ooh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, get Dave. This game. <laughs> well, no, unless you upgrade your teleport all the way, and then you can just like bing around like instantly, blinking all over the place, bing stabbing around. people. I don't know what you would call it. You can blink, or it's called, Did called you just blink. Do some Microsoft product placement on the podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How much are they paying you, Jeremiah? How much are they paying you? These technical difficulties <laughs> not brought to you by Skype, which is owned by Microsoft. <laughs> technical difficulties brought to you by Google. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I would say, you know, looting doesn't really drive me to finish a game. I just do that because I'm psychologically disturbed, I suppose. But <laughs> story, story's a big deal. I mean, I, if it's a game like Max Payne, which I haven't played yet, I have it. But, um, you know, that's it's really story driven or a game that lets me kind of weave my own story. Um, you know, I... I was an English major in college, so story is, is, is really what captivates me and keeps me moving through a game. Mm -hmm. uh, That's cool. I have, I have a hard question. What compels you to finish a very crappy game? <laughs> what crappy game have you played that you're just like, why am I still playing this, but I have to finish it? Basically, you're asking us to walk down the hall of shame here. What? Uh... <laughs> yes. I think that's kind of like the questions that we've just been answering, and it's, you know, our perfectionism or... Like, getting that ding, you've completed it, you know? Well, give Perfection us an example, though. Let's hear some that games. That is how some games end. That's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, let's hear Even some games, game. though. Mm. Anyone All have right, all the stars? I'll with? start. All I right. felt compelled to go through Rise of the Argonaut. Which Rise was, of the Argonauts? It, it, it was okay. Like... <laughs> It, it, it was a little rough <laughs> around the edges, but it, it had the Greek mythology going for it, and it, it, it did have some RPG elements where you have the story tree, and I just I just kept playing and kept playing and kept playing, and by golly, I finished. <laughs> uh, for me, what, what for me, I think it was probably Alpha <gasps> Protocol. Alpha Protocol is not a good game. Oh, really? Um, no, I don't know why people seem to like it. Like, people... Talk about liking it so much. And uh, like I owned a boxed copy years ago and um, I beat it. Then I bought it again on Steam. For some reason, like I f forgot how much I didn't like it and got it again on Steam when it was like a dollar. <laughs> you buy anything on Steam. Uh, buy yeah. Steam. But anyway, the, the original game, like back when I had a box copy, I guess like 2008. I forget how old it is, but it just like if there's a cool level up system and it feels like you're going to be awesome. And then you spend the whole game not being awesome. And it's one of those games where the enemies are either incredibly smart or so stupid. So I'd spend some levels running around right behind people, just like kicking them all in the head. And then other levels, I would just die over and over and over. Um, so <laughs> that game I was pretty ashamed of, but that was back when I was still pretty much finishing every game. And then the last one most recent one I played all the way through was Deus Ex Human Revolution. And Deus Ex Human Revolution is a great game, but the boss fights were contracted out to another company. Oh. And the boss fights take everything good about the game, throw it away, and then are terrible. I had to look up, I had to Google how to game the system to beat almost all of the boss fights because they didn't make any sense. Uh, so yeah, I, I didn't enjoy the boss fights. I love the rest of the game, though, so I made myself finish it, even though the boss fights were terrible. Yeah, I wish I could make myself... I, I got pretty far in it, but yeah. I got stuck, and I was like, Dully! <laughs> Joel. Did, did you get stuck on a boss fight? No, I, I, I think I killed the first boss, and then after that... The, I... the first boss. <laughs> <laughs> so he completed the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Way to contribute, Joel. <laughs> Man, you really gave it a fair shake. I was in 10 hours, so... <laughs> no, I, I don't blame you there. I mean, that's kind of my rule of thumb on a lot of this stuff is, you know, play what you enjoy. I don't feel too bad about yeah. dropping a game if yeah, if here. it spoils, like if, if the mechanics are bad or there's other things that I'd rather be playing. I don't, that's I'm not why the kind I of guy to suffer Skyrim. through things. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think I've offended some people here. You're in bad but... company here, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim's mechanics got boring to me. It feels like playing the same game as Oblivion. Uh, like, I feel like I'm doing the same stuff, just running around doing the same quest in a different place. Out of curiosity, what was your character like? Argonian. My character... <laughs> no one plays the Argonians. Um, <laughs> my I mean, character... Like, as far as your, your loadout and your skills and all. I, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I still have it installed. To, uh, I still have it installed. My character was an elf. I generally play as, like, an old, grizzled elf who, um, like, uses dual blades and hacks people up. But okay. then I accidentally was like in the warriors guild and they were like do you want to become a werewolf and i wasn't really listening when they were asking me <laughs> questions <laughs> so then they turned me into a werewolf and that happens not, a lot it's easy to ignore werewolf conversation <laughs> i'm not enjoying being a werewolf um <laughs> that quest line was annoying but but I, yeah. in general i i think all i just enjoyed the quest in oblivion more oblivion felt more epic it felt like you know 
I don't know. I just enjoy it more. I was just curious because, it, like, I've heard that different characters can be more fun to play in Skyrim. I, I went with the, the ranger, and one thing I noticed from Oblivion was that the archery feels so much better in Skyrim. It is. The combat is a lot better, but combat wasn't really why I played Oblivion to start with, so I don't really yeah. care, like, if the combat's that much better. That wasn't why I was playing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I might go back and finish it someday. I haven't deleted it. I still have plenty of space on my game's hard drive. <laughs> you should try so some mods we'll to help uh, spice it up a bit. There's plenty uh, to choose I've got, from. I've got a bunch of um, visual mods, and I've got some mods to bounce the game out, fix the UI, stuff like that. I'm running yeah. a bunch of mods. It makes the game really pretty, but it's just the core game itself. I don't know. Like, it's fun, but I keep having these, like, 10-hour games that are really fun that I want to play. <laughs> so, so, you so, you my request <laughs> for uh, collecting all the crimson roots in the, uh, no. the underground? No, I, did I don't do know that. why I did it, but I was so bored. I was like, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> I go down in that whole, like that super awesome giant underground world area. I forget what it's called. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> hey, do you know what I'm talking about? That, that... He hasn't yeah, gotten yeah. that far. No. I don't know. I forget. What... D- don't name it, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's a really cool underground area. This is, this is a pretty good story. I've heard this one. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> but anyways, you collect all this. I collect, you have to collect 30 of these suckers. So I collected all of them except for one, and one was at the top of this waterfall. And I slipped into the waterfall, grabbed it, and then it just threw me off, and I landed on a rock and died, and I didn't have a save, like, for the last, like, two hours. Why not? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Joel's never going back. <laughs> Why wouldn't you save? I just didn't think about it. I, I usually only save when I walk in a door. Or, actually, I don't even save. I just walk into a door or load into a new area, and it saves it for me. Oh, man, I'm an obsessive saver. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Were you playing on PC or on Xbox? What's the game for you, Joy? You know, I honestly, I don't think I've ever completed a game that I didn't like. I actually gave up on a game for once. That was impressive. What game did you give up on? I actually gave up on a Lego game, which is even more impressive. (sighs) It was the Star Wars Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. I tried so hard, but I just did not like the game for that one. It, like, had so many, like, battle scenes, but they weren't really battle scenes. It was kind of weird, and they all were, like, exactly the same. So, like, after you completed one level, the next level was, like, exactly the same. I tried really hard just because I needed to, like, say I did all the games, but then I was like, nope, I can't do this. It's too boring. I did give up. You should try Dark Souls. You might give up on that even quicker. <laughs> That's some great Friendly advice, advice right from James. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joel, I think we had uh, one more question. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, no, I think that was it. That was four of them, I think. No, you, no there was a fourth one. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to let you know. I had four of them, but I realized that one of them is kind of basically the same thing. I think we've already covered it. Okay. But I do have a 90 seconds segment. Oh, man. Look who's greedy tonight. Okay. I'm not greedy. It's time for 90 seconds to Joel, the part of the podcast where Joel talks about (laughs) something for about 90 seconds. Joel, entertain us. (laughs) I I wanted to mention just there's a lot of shows ending soon. Um, The Office, notably. Tonight, actually. Yeah, tonight. We've missed it. It's done. (laughs) <laughs> watch it later without commercials yeah and so i don't know i just kind of want to mention that it's nine years of the show and i mean i i kind of consider it ending at the after the seventh season season after michael scott left but mm-hmm. we kind of stuck with it because it was office and it's one of the right. shows we kind of no spoilers by the way yeah i, I don't want to say anything back to season what dave last season <laughs> god <laughs> returns for the last episode which i'm sure they will he will but they keep on teasing that he won't but you know i think i think he will by the time this is published, everyone will know if he was in there. So, if he was <laughs> not, he was on like a fool. Actually, right now it's on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anybody have any shows that are coming to an end that are. Breaking Bad has like eight more episodes, <laughs> and I am excited. And, uh,. And Dexter, after going through a couple crummy seasons, uh, their last season, they pretty much went for all the marbles. And, um,. I'm really excited to see what they do with the last season because they kind of went from settling into, hey, we're popular and we'll never go off the air to what happens if we flip everything on its head? And it was actually really, really <laughs> awesome. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, the end of that's going to be really good. What other shows are ending? See, I'm still bitter about Firefly, so. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Did you guys watch, that Jericho? Did you guys watch Jericho? Uh, oh, actually, Jericho, yeah. That uh, was a bittersweet. Hope and I just started watching Jericho on Dave's recommendation. 
this is a, a, a show that I'm watching just because of the story, not because of the acting. Because there it gets better. Much. It does get better. It does get better, and you're like, holy crap! Does the main character always look like he's taking a dump? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he looks but like they only shoot him from the waist up. They look like. <laughs> It looks like he's always either taking a dump or falling asleep. Like, I can't tell. I think it's the eyelids. He, he looks he looks a bit out of it. He looks concerned all the time, too. <laughs> well, I mean, it is an apocalypse. But not everyone else is concerned. Okay, we're four episodes in. Why is everyone hanging out at the bar? Like, shouldn't there be something productive everyone could be doing in this town? <laughs> yeah, they're forgetting like, the worries, Jeremiah. Once again, it's an apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, the acting does get better. Uh, I, I will warn you, though, that... The second season was the one after it was canceled for like two years and they brought it back and then had to wrap up basically what was left of the show in like six episodes mm -hmm. and they had it written out for like an entire couple of seasons and, and so it's really really cram packed it's enjoyable but you can tell it's one of those things where like if it just had been given some more time some more budget it could have been so much better is the second season only six episodes it's maybe seven it's oh, really wow. abbreviated, yeah. no matter what it is. Oh well, we're we're enjoying it enough so far. So it's like a third we'll of the size of what it was supposed to be, right? You know, another thing: how you guys liking all the new shows that are coming on, like you know, Netflix, um, and now Amazon trying to do. Uh, I haven't watched any of Amazon's. We watched House of Cards, which was excellent. Um, oh, I haven't finished it. I'm like six episodes in. I love that. Show. And then my wife started watching Hemlock Grove and said it was terrible. Um, that has like a hand coming out of a wolf's mouth. I'm not sure why you want to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's exactly why you want to watch Why wouldn't you want to watch that? <laughs> Arrested the Bell sort of coming thing. out the 26th. I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> I'm yes. tentatively excited. We'll see. It's been almost 10 years. Let's see if they, you know, if they still got it. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually been watching some of the older seasons for like the ninth time. We've watched all of them so many times now. Oh yeah. Each time they you watch it, you see more. From, they released a clip from one of the new episodes too. I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. <laughs> do you, how do you guys feel in general about shows that leave and come back? Like 24 is coming back. I stopped. Next okay, any crazy. for fans of 24, go look up the series Strike Back. It's a British show. That like it was on Sky TV and then Cinemax picked it up, but I think they only picked it up for Britain. It's like twenty four, but good. <laughs> take like all the good. So parts to all of the, the fans of twenty four, he just fished you off. <laughs> <laughs> take, you can take, email your thoughts too. <laughs> take all the fun bits. Germ gaming of, at <laughs> at Germ gaming on Twitter. Um, so you take all the fun bits of twenty four, all the good stuff, and cram it into like a seven episode season or an eight episode season. And it's it's really enjoyable. So anyway, strike back for fans. There's only one more episode coming back, and it's gonna just basically sum up all the characters and just for 24. No, no, it's another special, very special show to my heart. It crowd. They're getting, oh, ready, yeah. they're getting ready to film the last. It's gonna be an hour long episode, and it's gonna wrap all the characters up. And that's a very sad show to have end because they only made like six episodes per season, but they were glorious. I think it has to be. <laughs> it's right up there with one of my top favorite comedy shows of like definitely of all times it is just hilarious mm -hmm. um and that's gonna be awesome and sad but very excited to see moss, moss and uh, roy again mm -hmm. i think the perfect example of a show that went just long enough and then ended well there's two the first is the wire the wire i mean of course you'll see enough people telling you that it's like one of the best tv shows ever made so you don't need me saying it again the wire is awesome um, but it takes a couple watches to appreciate it. But it went for five seasons and it ended perfectly. Uh, and then Battlestar Galactica. Yes. Like Battlestar Galactica pretty much did a hard burn for four seasons and then just ended. Um, and I actually liked the ending. It, it didn't bother me nearly as much as I guess it seemed to bother a lot of don't, people. Don't but... spoil it. I haven't watched the ending yet. I made okay. episodes away. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, I liked the ending of Lost. I didn't like the 20 episodes before it. Or the season before <laughs> that, but... <laughs> That's uh, funny, I felt like Lost went one episode too long. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it went two seasons too long. Hope and I, like, midway through season six, we honestly, like, it felt like work. It felt like when you guys are talking about games, you only finish just to say you did. We felt like, like, we just, we have to keep, I don't want to. <laughs> this is just, it's so bad. That would explain my entire experience with Smallville. 
Uh, I, I gave up after Lavo, season. It's pretty three. terrible, but it was super banned. So. <laughs> All right, so I think that's been 90 seconds with Joel. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Does anyone have any more things, segments they'd like to talk about? Anything you want to talk about before we go? Should I confess my loot room at this point? Go ahead and confess your loot room. I got to bring something up we got to do before we end. But yeah, go ahead and start talking about your loot room. Yeah, I'll I'll keep it short. But uh, just basically, my console commands were not enough to handle my loot problem. Even at 1400 weight at some point I realized that I just had too many like gold bars just weird stuff I didn't really need to have with me So I went back to my house in uh, white run is the main that that first main city, right? Yep. Where you get mm-hmm. Lydia. Yeah, so there's like a, like a servants room upstairs at that at the house You have in white run a pretty good sized room with some tables and chairs and all and I'm like Lydia doesn't actually use this room. I'll just dump some extra gear here So I spent about a half an hour going through my inventory, right-clicking on things, and then I press tab to close my inventory, and the game froze for about two and a half minutes or so, and then a fountain of glorious loot exploded all over the room. (laughs) It coated the tables, the chairs, the bed. I'm talking like a couple hundred rubies and diamonds, just stuff everywhere. And once the game stopped lagging and the FPS caught up, it just kind of piled in the corners and up on top of all the furniture. And now, when you go into my house, if you go upstairs to the room and open the door, the door actually swings into the piles of loot and flings it everywhere again. So I just have this giant <laughs> room where occasionally I'll just go back to White Run and just fling the doors open and just like dance in the piles of loot briefly. I'm never going to use any of it. It's just there lagging my game, but it's kind of glorious, actually. <laughs> and, Good thing uh, houses are separate instances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I love that you actually chose a room that. That character doesn't use. I just walked <laughs> in the house and dropped it right off the carpet. Like that. <laughs> Usually, in Elder Scrolls games, I go, I just find a big house and then kill the owner, and that's what I use for all my loot. <laughs> oh. Buying houses um, is for suckers. I have a little public service announcement. If you are planning on playing Elder Scrolls online, please find Dave's house and loot. <laughs> no, back up. Find the son. dwelling place of Dave. You will have endless <laughs> cash flow. All right, before we go, um, we did a thing last time where we uh, said some we'll take we'll choose randomly from someone who goes and writes a review on iTunes of the podcast, whether a one star or five star, we would uh, give you a copy of Mass Effect 2 for Origin. So we had someone write a review, One Call System. He wrote the review. His review is, I'm digging the casts from these guys. They play an assortment of shooters and have entertaining commentary on them as such. They also cover technical issues such as building your own PC. Highly recommended in doing so. And overall, good coverage of the games they play, which is BF3, Daisy, and Arma. The only downside is they don't cover my favorite shooter, Red Orchestra 2. Yet. Yeah. Okay, yet, apparently. Um, <laughs> so you played one, it, so... <laughs> thank you for rating it, and everyone who's who's listening, uh, if you would, go to iTunes and, and write a review. We're, we'll give games away periodically to people who write reviews. Whether it's a one-star or five-star, you are equally eligible to win. But one call system, get in contact with me, at Germ Gaming on Twitter uh and or five via some other method i mean you know how to get in contact with us and uh i will give you your code for mass effect 2 unless you randomly wrote a review and did not actually listen to that part of the podcast in which <laughs> case you won't get this i'll give you a week to contact me if you haven't contacted <laughs> me um then we'll just move on to someone else but i uh, anyway uh follow us on twitter at germ gaming at evil viking at casual shenaniga um <laughs> does anyone else have a twitter they'd like to throw out there Okay, no one else has a Twitter they would like to throw out there. That's fine. Uh, oh, yeah? What is it? Mm, you guys should definitely go check it out. It's pretty um, exciting. My interest in Battlefield had been waning some, but but Joel has revived it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I can do anything now. So you should go watch it. Go subscribe to Joel. I did. I did. <laughs> I love the random jet lawn dart when you're like... <laughs> giving scope commentary and this jet just lawn darts like a hundred yards away from you just smack right into the ground <laughs> Classic. Yep, go Bell check Joel out Boundless MP on YouTube check Dave out Evil Viking 13 check me out Germ Gaming although if you're watching this you are already on my channel <laughs> uh, but thank you everybody for joining us and as always if you have questions send them into casual shenanigans at gmail.com to be a part of the show and we will see you all next time so bye everybody see you guys see ya bye